Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Rob McEwen from McEwen Mining. In this interview, we discuss the challenges within the Canadian mining environment and how Rob thinks that Canada can change the perception of mining in Canada. We also discuss copper prices and Goldman Sachs' new bullish target of $6.80 per pound by 2025. And we also discuss McEwen Mining and their Los Azules project in Argentina, which has some gigantic metrics. And Rob does a great job of breaking those down in terms of what cash flows could look like for the company once they get to production. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Rob, thanks so much for joining us today. Happy to be on, Steve. So, Rob, uh, we just had PDAC, which is the world's biggest mining conference, if people aren't aware. Um, and uh, there's a lot of talk right now in in the industry. We've got Pierre Lassonde and Frank Justra who uh, have written some editorials and made some media appearances that they're unhappy that there isn't more pension fund investment going into mining, and especially in Canada. Um, and uh, there, there certainly is a little bit of frustration. I know as we were talking pre-interview about the lack of capital that exists in the junior mining space. I'm curious here, what's what's your thoughts on, 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 on what's happening right now with junior mining in Canada? And how do you think uh, we get back on the right track? Well, it's definitely been out of favor amongst investors. Um, there hasn't been a lot of capital coming into the space. I think um, when Pierre and Frank are talking about pension funds, um, we should be investing in the future, but you have to ask yourself the question, why are those funds choosing to invest somewhere else rather than in one of the foundation industries of the country? And is it is it because the returns aren't there? Is it um, the margins aren't large enough to attract investment capital? And if that's the case, what can we do as a country to encourage, to improve those margins? Is, it, um, is there too much taxation? Is the permitting taking too long? Is there uncertainty dealing with the First Nations that uh, slow it down? Um, and I, I really think we have a huge opportunity as a country to be uh, a supplier of the metals that will be necessary to control climate change. Um, and we're not embracing that. We're throwing that away. It, it, mining is, a, is an industry that's one of the highest paying industries in the country. It's requiring lots of skills. There's, it's been painted as a, a bad custodian of the environment. But you look at the amount of money that's being spent to protect the environment and saying, and the amount of technology that's going to come into mining and say, this is a high tech industry for Canada. It's one of the foundation stones of the country's economy. Um, we should be encouraging it, but our governments aren't, particularly the federal government. Uh, it's shameful what they're doing there. They've contributed to inflation in the country with their carbon tax. They've chased away some of the highest paying industries and foreign investors. Uh, I, I, I personally think this is a time to be buying uh, in the precious metal space, the juniors. I, I, I've seen this a couple of times before and you want to buy when no one's buying because uh, when you look at all of the the money printing that's gone on around the world, the amount of debt that's been incurred, um, it's a formula for higher metal prices, particularly precious metals and inflation. So that's where I am. I'm a buyer. When when we look at, and, and I do this whenever we have companies on or just in general as sort of a fun exercise, I like to look at you know, the year to date return, the one year, the three year, the five year, the 10 year, whatever of junior mining companies versus the actual spot price. And I have to say that it's, 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 I almost never see, sometimes you do see over a given time period that, a, that, a, that a miner will outperform the spot price. But if, <laughs> and, and maybe I'm saying this cause we're at, at, at what feels like a market bottom. 
but for the most part the the miners never can maintain uh the the the, the positive price movements in the commodity that they're actually going after and i look at it and, and i almost go you you almost have to be crazy to invest in some of these junior mining companies because they're just so dilutive and if you've ever been around some of these companies and i know we got burned on a bunch of private investments that we made into various companies where uh you know you, you write a check and a bunch of other people write a check and then you, you a year later you talk to the company and they're like oh we're out of money and it's like well what have you accomplished and it turns out that they accomplished nothing and um and and not that that's always the case but it but it often is and it makes me wonder to what extent the problems that exist within Canadian junior mining is just that we have a lack of uh, young talent that is uh, driving deals forward and 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 in making progress, or how much of the problem is just simply put that there just isn't enough capital that it's just too dried up uh, for 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 whoever tries to actually move these projects forward to even be successful in the first place. Hmm. Well, I think there's a a certain time expectation for things to happen, and mining is moves at a slower speed than, say, the tech industry. Um, and so, someone get puts out a good drill hole, but the investor goes, "Well, what's it mean? It's one hole, or it's ten holes? Give me some sense of does this mean there's a deposit that can be mined and how long is it going to take to go from a couple of drill holes to uh, seeing a mine built? And that's easy five years, if not 10 years in many cases. And investors aren't waiting to, to spend that much time. Um, what we really need is some sort of NVIDIA moment in the industry. Um, but I don't see that coming right away. In terms of performance, uh, I can look at our own stock, and I don't consider it a major, but McEwen Mining since September of uh, 2022 to yesterday's close is up 185%. Um, and we're, we're at least five times what the Dow or the NASDAQ has done in terms of we're 5x what it's done. and almost nine times what the price of gold has done. Um, ours has been driven by a, a large copper deposit, not a gold deposit, that we have in Argentina, where we've been able to attract the likes of global giants, Rio Tinto, and um, which is the second largest mining company in the world, and Stellantis, the fourth largest car manufacturing in the world, manufacturer, uh, as big shareholders. Um, and so I believe there's money in these unusual pockets. We approached the car companies. And one thing that really surprised me was with the geopolitical disruption that's happening in supply chains, the big manufacturers are starting to look and saying, well, where are we going to source the raw materials? And we spoke to Volkswagen about maybe investing in a copper mine. And they came back and one of the things that came out of that conversation was they had 16 geologists on staff. And I went, I've never, never would have thought that. Um, but just, I think the industry has been going to doors that it used to go traditionally to raise capital. And many of those doors have closed or disappeared. So you have to start looking, where can you go for other sources of capital? Um, Morningstar that measures funds under management in uh, late 2022 estimated that there was over $2.2 trillion in the impact funds and ESG funds. So if the mining industry can spend more time thinking about the complaints that the general public have of mining, and saying we're going to address those, I call it, can we Uberize mining? I mean, you know how Uber came along and basically decimated the taxi industry because it seemed to provide an answer to uh, many of the complaints of the industry. And can we do that in mining? 
can we present a better picture to the public, one that's more acceptable, and access some of this capital that's sitting over there in these other pools. Um, we're doing that in our copper project, and I, I hired a, an architect two years ago who was considered the Steve Jobs of the green living sustainable building space and said, help us redefine mining. Help us alter the, help to alter the perception of mining. So we're looking at designing a mine that will be 100% renewable energy using a quarter of the water that a uh, conventional copper mine of its size would be producing, emitting one third the carbon um, and will be net zero carbon in 2038 in agreement with Stellantis who came in and said, look, we're going EV big time and we want all our supply chain to have uh, very low carbon emissions, if any. Uh, we said, you know, we're not going to use a conventional mill because that creates tailings and we'll be working in the Andes Mountain where there's seismic events and we don't want a tailings dam at first, so we'll use heap leach and that contributes to the lower water. And so it's just think it's, it's looking at the industry and trying to say, how do you do it differently? How do you do it in a way that shocks in a very positive way the public perception of mining right now? It's it's kind of funny because everything you're saying and and you're somebody who's having these conversations with the 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 decision makers at auto companies and um large investors and there's there's definitely a perception when I chat with let's say uh, a banker at a small Canadian investment bank, uh, small on a global scale, um, or a, just a regular retail investor, or say e even somebody who's like maybe a smaller institutional investor. And they all like to joke about ESG and roll their eyes at it. Like it's all just a joke and it's all just window dressing. And I feel like you're right that, that they're like from, from, from maybe the sleazy industry standpoint, we're happy to put that window dressing on a deck, but, Talk is cheap, right? So it's it's really about actually doing those things that actually do make a difference, that are tangible events or investments that actually make, you know, the 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 dinner table conversation with families to say, hey, this this actually makes sense. These companies are are doing things differently, as opposed to just oh, you know, we we've done checked off a few boxes that we're, we're we were able to check off in an afternoon. Yes. Yes. Now, um, I, I just think there's a lot of opportunity for the industry to find capital elsewhere. Um, and the public really hasn't grasped the enormity of the demand for metals that are necessary to meet a lot of the climate change goals. And we're, it, it's an industry that has got a shrinking labor pool and has is looking to different corners of technology to help it deal with this shrinking labor pool, to increase the productivity, to improve the margins, to improve the environmental stewardship. Um, I think there's a lot of opportunity there. Goldman Sachs this week, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware, came out with a, uh, sorry, it might've been last week. Um, time goes by so fast these days. Uh, a uh, a a forecast on on the price of copper six dollars and eighty cents a pound. Do you, you think that that's a realistic? I, I mean, copper is such a big market that it's hard to imagine it moving that quickly. I suppose it has in the past. You you, you think that that's a, a a realistic target? Well, I've seen some um, you know supply demand projections and the. There's a large gap that many firms, including Goldman, are suggesting is developing. Um, and if China comes back on stream, they were a huge buyer of copper and there's urbanization taking place in uh, Asia. So I could see that number. I mean, I'd be quite, very happy with that number. I mean, our copper project is projected to be producing copper at $1.07 a pound. Um, 
So if it gets up to $6, I'm going to put a few smiles on it. A lot of people are asking me. I have the numbers in front of me here, a $37 billion uh, copper resource, uh, estimated annual production at 321 million pounds. That's, that's, I'm talking about the Los Azules project. Um, estimated mine life of 27 years. Uh, what sort of a timeline are we looking at for you guys to get this project into production? Uh, feasibility um, in the first half of next year, bankable feasibility. Uh, there'll be a year of engineering work, um, shovel in the ground in 26, production in late 29. Um, that 27-year life is just mining the uh, super gene, the primary copper, and we're only mining 40% uh, during that 27 years. Um, it's a $2.5 billion uh, capex estimated last year, payback in three years. Um, I like to look at non-gold properties and convert it into a gold equivalent. Uh, what you're looking at is something that's using today's, the price of gold and the price of copper and looking at how many pounds of copper equals one out, the value of one ounce of gold. It's about 535. Um, that'd be equivalent to a 70 million ounce gold deposit producing the average over its life of 600,000 ounces gold equivalent a year at under $600 an ounce cost. In my book, that's a really good gold deposit. And if you want to look at it another way, that is the horse, the 70 million is equal to the historic production coming out of the Timmins gold camp, one of the largest gold camps in the world. Now that, that's, that's a sound bite. <laughs> Uh, has has gold lost its luster for Mikuin mining? No, not at all. Um, we had a absolutely horrible uh, couple of years, nine, 2019 through 22, where our operations did not deliver on guidance and our share price just dived. Um, it hurt all our shareholders. Um, we're now back on course. 23, we made the low end of guidance on production. Uh, we, and I, I think this is a time to grow and add to our gold production. I'm, I'm a gold bug by nature. And I think there's, the world is awash with liquidity. There's a great deal of debt that has to be serviced. And it's really a formula that we've seen in the past is in sort of fueled inflation and um, during those periods the price of gold has climbed quite rapidly and i think you're going to see that so i want to be positioned with more gold production and now, now's the time to buy you mentioned uh that you guys had some guidance issues i appreciate that uh you're just uh getting right in front of that and 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 uh not trying to to uh, politic your way around it. So what does the company need to do to reestablish credibility with investors after failing to meet that guidance? Time. Uh, trust is built slowly and we have to keep demonstrating that we're delivering on guidance. Um, we delivered on the production. My, the costs are higher than I wanted by about 10 or 10 to 18%. Um, so we have to bring the cost down, improve the margin. We have some expansion we're doing this year in Timmins and in Mexico. Um, and uh, we were able to separate our copper asset. I felt the market had a preference for pure plays, like pure precious metals or copper. So um, our copper was in a subsidiary and Back in 2022, well, in 21, I put 40 million in myself just to lead an order thinking we'd uh, get the other 40 million in short order. I thought it'd be a piece of cake, but it took a year. We raised 82 million. Rio Tinto came in then and they participated in the last two financings. But the implied value of our copper has increased from 
based on the last financing from uh, under 200 million to over 800 million dollars. Um, and it's growing nicely. Uh, the gold's coming along. And as I mentioned before the show, since September 1st of 2022, we're up 185% to the close of business yesterday, uh, which is a minimum of 5x better than gold, silver, copper, the Dow Jones, um, and the uh, NASDAQ. So we're, we're on the road of redemption. The first, the, that period I mentioned, 19 to 22, was the road to hell. It was awful. <laughs> So, Rob, something I find really fascinating about you is that I see you uh, at conferences, you hop on shows like ours, and you're constantly out there working your deal. You're constantly out there talking about the industry, talking about McEwen Mining, and, and, and even taking your licks when things don't go to plan. I look at a lot of these mining CEOs that uh, need a lot more money uh, than you do, and uh, they don't show up at those events. But here, it'd be very easy for you to just, you know, take that sort of backseat. I'm going to be that that chairman and, and and not go to any of these events and and uh, just sort of sit back and, and let other people do the work. But you still show up and, and and you're doing everything you can for shareholders to get out there and talk about the company and talk about the industry. Is is it just something that you just feel a responsibility to do? Is it is it because you you just love mining and you love the industry? What what is it that 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 gets you up in the morning and and continuing to to do this when you don't necessarily have to? Well, I guess I'll start by saying I have a vested interest. I have between McEwen Mining and McEwen Copper, I've invested two hundred and twenty million U.S. in my company. And I take a dollar a year in salary and have for more than 15 years. So um, one, I'd like to see the price back to where it used to be. And two, I think the mining industry, is just a, a very important industry for Canada and for many other parts of the world. It, it's, um, as I said, it, it's a very high paying industry. It's got lots of technology in it. it Unlike the service injuries, industry, it has huge multiplier effect in the broad economy. You know, a dollar in the mining industry equates to two or three dollars in the broad e economy, whereas the service industry is like about 60 cents for every dollar put in. So it, it's allowed Canada and many other countries to enjoy a very high standard of living. And I feel that more people need to understand that that that's given us the, the wonderful life we have in the country, but it's in peril. And we should, if we could promote our natural resources in a better way, we could lower the inflation rate in the country, let encourage a flow of capital in that would drive our dollar up to par or at a premium to the US dollar. Um, this is something that, um, I'm proud to be part of, and I think it it gives a lot of people, it can give them financial liberty to choose where they want to work, to uh, pay for what they want to buy, get their kids through college, um, and to invest in the future. Um, it's, it's a very important industry, and we have this great resource, and right now we're throwing it away. So I'm going to keep talking about it until hopefully someone says, Yes, I agree. <laughs> You're just that stubborn. Um, last question for you, Rob. Uh, for investors in McEwen Mining, if they're watching this and they're they're saying, "Okay, how how do I evaluate management for 2024? What's 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 the catalysts or the the milestones or the timelines? What are they watching out for in 2024?" Okay. Um, well, I'm a big believer in exploration delivering fantastic results. When I Ran Gold Corp, we were had the good fortune of finding a large gold deposit a mile below surface. And we watched stock go from about 38 cents to $42 over uh, an extended period of time. Um, I think investors, 
you know, including McEwen Mining, I think the natural resource sector is going to move, and right now is a time to be buying. Uh, for McEwen Mining, we're doing an expansion program in our, our Timmins operation that will give us nine plus years of life up there. Um, we'll be uh, erecting a plant in Mexico where we have a mine on care and maintenance that's growing, exploring uh, in Gold Bar. And we're going to be moving, um, once we get the feasibility done on McEwen Copper, uh, we hope to take that public, do an IPO, which will, um, I mean, our earnings, what have we done? Our working capital in 22 is a negative two and a half million. In 23, it ended at 22.7 million. Um, our earnings went from a horrible <laughs> loss of $81 million or $1.71 to a dollar net income of $1.15 and $54.7 million. Um, production this year will be a little slower, lower, um, but that's just a base to expand it from there. Um, I think we're well positioned. Uh, we reduced our debt by 38% to 40 million. Um, and it's uh, not quite optimistic about what's going ahead right now. So those are the catalysts. Yeah. Rob, I, I, I appreciate you hopping on here. It's always a pleasure when we get to talk to you. Uh, and uh, I think I think you're doing your, your shareholders a real service. And uh, obviously, you're you're a large shareholder. So it makes sense. Uh, you're you you why why you're hopping on here and 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 working so hard for your shareholders and I think that that's something that a lot of investors should really think about when they when they look at companies is how incentivized is the CEO as a shareholder because they tend to be a lot more cautious about things like dilution and uh, and the company's treasury when they are uh, a, a large shareholder in the company themselves so. Um, I, I really appreciate you hopping on here and, and doing this and, uh, hopefully you'll keep coming back on in the future to, uh, to, to give us your insights because, uh, our, our audience, uh, really responds well and gets engaged when you do. Well, thank you very much, Steve. Uh, one comment I'd like to close with is that the mining industry, uh, mother nature has shared her treasures with many, but many who benefited from that have contributed to the enhancing society and healthcare and education and uh, you go up uh, university avenue in toronto you'll see all sorts of names people from the mining industry adorned on the hospitals as you're going up there and that would be true of the natural resources sector in calgary or in vancouver or elsewhere in the, in the country um so it's a uh, it's it doesn't stop with coming out of the ground. It gets spread across and improves the lives for all Canadians. Well, Rob, thanks for hopping on here. And uh, we'll be uh, watching McEwen Mining over the coming quarters. Thank you very much. All the best. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this interview, please smash that like button, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Also, let me know what you think of the comment section. Thanks, everyone.